Hi, and welcome along to your quarterly global markets update for September 2012, brought to you by HelixTrader.com. And then in the next 30 minutes or so, we'll take a look at some of the major uh, global markets uh, across stocks, currencies, and commodities, and just uh, see if we can tease out where the markets might be headed in the next uh, four to six months. So first of all, a quick uh, disclaimer, and uh, what you're about to see is just uh, for your education and entertainment only. Nothing you'll see is a recommendation to buy or sell. If you want to risk your money in the financial markets, make sure you do your own homework, and if you need professional advice, seek the counsel of a licensed financial advisor. So with that said, let's get straight into it. Uh, first of all, we kick off with the U.S. stock market. We always like to start with the S&P 500. It is the uh, uh, biggest and broadest market in the world and still has a huge effect on uh, other stock markets around the world. So it's always good to keep an eye on what it's up to. As we can see here, we're just stuck very much in this uh, long-term sideways uh, uh, consolidation phase. Uh, the market's really gone nowhere since uh, the late 90s. Uh, shorter term, we are just uh, starting to edge toward those old uh, 2007 and 2001 highs. Uh, in fact, we're only about 6% uh, away, um, and uh, I, I'm pretty confident that we'll get there on this leg up. And in fact, uh, I think we'll probably exceed the old highs uh, by a little bit, uh, as, as we'll see later on. Uh, but uh, so very much a neutral consolidation phase, but uh, but sh certainly short term bullish on on this chart. And uh, zooming in on the weekly, we can see we're in certainly in this very well-behaved uptrend uh, as we have been since uh, early 2009. Uh, still maintaining this uh, nice well-behaved channel and uh, and higher highs and higher lows. So certainly looking bullish on this chart. Uh, we did uh, just uh, have a little bit of a breakdown after that first attempt at the 1370 level. It started to look like it might be a little bit of a false breakout, but the market quickly recovered and it's pushed on to new highs. This is a uh, very bullish behavior. Uh, we've got support below just at the old uh, June high and uh, we've got further support below that at 1370 and then we've also got the rising trend line. So lots of support for this market. Very little resistance up ahead and uh, the, this, uh, the old high at 1576 um, certainly definitely looking under threat now. Uh, you could say the market's just looking a little bit uh, overextended to the upside so we may uh, we may just get a pullback uh, back to support. That would be very healthy for the market before for the next step, push higher. On the Ichimoku chart, and if you remember these cloud charts, uh, what we're looking for is uh, the price, which in this case is the candles, and the lagging line, this blue line. We want uh, them to both be either above or below the cloud uh, for us to be bullish or bearish. <clears throat> As you can see back here in 2009, we got a nice clean cross to the upside, both the price and the lagging line pushed through, and we've really remained above the cloud ever since then, uh, finding support uh, a couple of times in the cloud itself. We did have just a uh, minor breakdown of price, but the lagging line never looked like it was came. It was going to come come through, and we uh, pushed on to new highs. We're now pretty much in clean air on this chart. We do have support from the cloud below at 1335 and 1245, which is in line with what we saw on the weekly chart. So certainly very healthy uh, uptrend uh, in the, this chart, and uh, certainly bullish on the Ichimoku. Focusing in on the daily, and uh, as we saw, we did have that quick sell-off back in June. Um, in fact, it did uh, in May and June. In fact, and it, uh, it did just stop at the 61.8 retracement. Also, uh, the uh, the 200-day moving average, which is this green line, and uh, the 200-day moving average uh, does tend to be a line of equilibrium. We've seen here in the past it acted as uh, resistance, again as support here. It's now rising, which is bullish for the market. If we did get a bit of a deeper pullback, uh, we could expect uh, the 200-day moving average to act as support. It's edging up towards 1350, certainly in line with that uh, major support level on the weekly chart at 1370. Um, so uh, so that wouldn't be too bad. There wouldn't be too much damage done to the market if it did come back that, that distance. Um, however, in the meantime, we are in this sort of short-term bullish uh, trend. Uh, market pushing on into clear air and new highs. Again, just starting to look a little bit uh, overextended to the upside here. So we may get uh, we may get a pullback uh, to the the old highs or, or even further, as I said. Uh, but but certainly uh, uh, the picture is looking very rosy on the daily chart. 
And on the point and figure chart, uh, of course, if you remember these, uh, the col columns of X's are, are when the market's making uh, pro progress to the upside and uh, O's, the red O's, are when it's heading to the downside. Um, we did get uh, this, what's known as a high pull uh, warning um, back earlier in May, June when the market sold off. Um, it looked like it might head a little bit lower, but uh, the buyers came in, pushed the market, to new highs. We've now <coughs> reached the uh, these two targets here, 1440 and 1455, which were just exceeded uh, last week. Uh, so this is uh, looking very bullish for the market. In point figure, when uh, the market is meeting and exceeding targets to the upside, that's very bullish for the market and uh, we can see that it's done that back here 1305 we're now reached those targets we may just see a little bit of consolidation as uh, has happened when it's reached targets in the past at these levels but uh, up ahead we do have this very intriguing uh, target at 1605 which is exceeds the old 2007-2001 uh, highs um, and I think the the state the market's in now, uh, there's certainly no reason why we shouldn't push on towards that, and that would certainly make uh, very interesting. I mean, you would, it would certainly make headlines around the world if uh, if the market exceeded its old 07 highs, and uh, would certainly get a lot of people interested, uh, a lot of latecomers buying in as it broke to new highs, and uh, we we may either see that as the the high for the entire move, or uh, certainly uh, that could be a, a sign where it could uh, it could certainly consolidate or or even break. Uh, break a little lower at that point so but that that's a little bit way off yet yeah, all we can say now is it's certainly looking bullish and and uh, the the old highs uh, certainly within uh, went within reaching distance now so let's just look at, have a little look at some of the market internals and just find out if the uh, if the bullish picture that we're seeing on the price charts is uh, backed up with uh, what's happening below uh, in the market itself so uh, first of all, we like to look at the four horsemen of the market. These are the, the harbingers and the leading indicators of what's to come. Uh, the first one is technology here in the shape of the NASDAQ 100 monthly chart. I've just circled the old 2007 high there and as you can see it's uh, far exceeded it already on a monthly basis and uh, it's actually made up to this 50% uh, level of retracement of the uh, dot com bust uh, that we saw back in uh, 2000. Um, so it's certainly very bullish the fact that this is way above its old 07s highs is uh, is is good news for the broader market um, as you recall the broader market just below it so seven highs so uh, so if, if the technology is leading the broader market you would you would uh, expect the uh, the s p five hundred at least to uh, to push through those highs at, at some point so very uh, that's a tick in the box for the broader market from technology Looking at the small caps uh, here we've got the uh, Russell two thousand which is the u s uh, small caps index. Again, I've just uh, circled the old 2007 high uh, back here. Uh, as you can see, this market has been kind of consolidating lately in this kind of triangular shape. We did have a, a breakout a couple of weeks ago, and we're sitting right now at the old uh, 2007 high. Certainly, the second or third attempt at getting through there. So, uh, and and again, this is uh, this is leading the uh, the broader market because the broader market is still a little bit below the 07 highs. So. This is uh, certainly another bullish sign for the broader market, and we would expect probably the pop, uh, small caps to, to push through from uh, from this point here. On the financials, so this is the uh, the XLF ETF, which uh, is the investment houses, brokers, and uh, banks in the U.S. Uh, as you can see, back uh, the global financial crisis, uh, they suffered greatly, and uh, they just haven't really recovered uh, any of the distance. If you recall, the broader market is uh, way up near its old seven highs, and the um, the financials just kind of stuck in this uh, neutral sideways channel, just consolidating slightly. Uh, uh, and this this really tells us two things. One, it tells us that the broader market is willing to make ground while the uh, financials are not uh, participating. Uh, so that means that there's nothing really holding the, the broader market back short term. Uh, and the, secondly, it also tells us that uh, we're probably not at the start of a, a new long-term bull market right now because uh, generally for long-term bull markets to unfold you need the uh, financials to be involved and uh, and it they doesn't look like they're in any, any mood to participate at the moment so until we can see them making some uh, headway then uh, we can we're, we're probably it's the, the the upside of the broader market is probably going to be tempered slightly and perhaps once we break those
because all those seven highs, uh, we we may see uh, we may see the the buying um, uh, dry up a little bit. And the fourth horseman we like to look at is bonds. Uh, on the top pane here, you'll see the uh, this is the U U.S. 30-year Treasury, and then down the bottom here we have the S&P 500 itself. Bonds and stocks tend to uh, share an inverse relationship uh, because bonds are a risk-averse asset, stocks are a risk-seeking asset. So you tend to find that money flows into one and out of the other, and vice versa, and that has the effect of uh, putting their peaks and troughs uh, in in opposite. Positions. Positions uh, on the chart. Uh, however, what we've seen in the last year or so are both stocks and bonds rising, and uh, this is a very curious situation. Uh, and I think really what we're seeing here is the effect of the uh, so-called quantitative easing uh, that's uh, happening in the States. Uh, quantitative easing, of course, as you know, is supposed to inject liquidity into the economy. The government does that by buying uh, government bonds back, and the cash from that s those sales uh, goes to the, the major bondholders, who in, that, in this case is the banks. They're supposed to then lend that to uh, businesses to stimulate the economy. But in fact, what's happening is the money is not being loaned, and it's finding its way into the stock market. So that's pushing stock market prices up, and then the government uh, actually buying their own bonds back is also having the effect of pushing the bond market up. So we're seeing this uh, 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 twin track where the uh, stocks and bonds both um, uh, rising at the same time. So you wouldn't expect that relationship to last forever, um, but uh, I think not until we see the end of the so-called so quantitative easing in the States will we, uh, will we get any resolution to this. So uh, yes, yeah, so we'll just have to wait and watch and see what uh, what happens there. Volume, well volume is again another leading indicator and uh, here uh, the red and black line is the S&P 500 close price and the solid black line is the on balance volume and uh, you can see it's pretty evenly uh, well matched uh, price uh, since the middle of last year um, except for a couple of occasions and that was once back in uh, mid to late uh, 2011 where on balance volume was rising as the market made a new low into October and that told us that uh, price was probably going to uh, the price of the market was probably going to rise from there and, and so it did uh, right up until the, the sort of early to mid part of this year since then, uh, the market has uh, gone on to make new highs from its June low, but as we can see here, the on-balance volume just not quite agreeing with that. We could see the, the volume was ahead of price up here, and just lately it's just started to drop below, and that's just telling us that uh, the uh, latest uh, new highs that we're seeing in the market are, uh, are being uh, supported by less buying, and, and probably it's just an absence of selling more than anything. Um, but uh, certainly not, uh, not not too much of a concern just yet. Uh, I mean, the on-balance volume certainly not heading lower, but uh, just uh, not keeping quite pace quite with the market at the moment. So uh, again, that may temper the any upside that we're seeing in the market uh, at the moment, and we could be in for perhaps a, a short-term correction or, or some consolidation at these levels. So just having a look at market breadth now, and uh, this is the bullish percent index. Uh, this tracks the percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 that are bullish at any uh, moment in time. And uh, here again on the right hand edge of the chart you can see the market just making new highs but the bullish percent uh, not, not quite making a new high yet. Uh, and that's really again just telling us that the, the new highs in the markets have been supported uh, by less stocks. Um, so uh, not, again not, not really a, a, a near term concern as you can see here last year as the market was making highs uh, the bullish percent was uh, trending lower and the, so that divergence can last uh, for quite a few months and it's actually not an unusual thing uh, to see the, the first push and then the subsequent push is higher on, on lower uh, percentage of stocks being bullish. So again, we may see this turning to some sort of short-term correction, um, but certainly not bearish for the market just yet. Uh, if we got two or three of these peaks uh, lower, then uh, then we may uh, start to, to uh, raise a note of concern for the overall market. So just having a look at sentiment now, this is the put-call ratio. So this is the uh, ratio of puts to calls in the market, and uh, this 
tends to share an inverse relationship with the market itself. Uh, when people are bearish, they buy lots of puts, that sends this measure higher. And when people are bullish, they buy lots of calls, that sends this measure lower. And you tend to get at extremes, you tend to get to reversals in the market. So we can see here late in, in June this year, uh, we just nudged into that bearish extreme. That, uh, that had the effect of kicking off the, the market higher. Uh, the markets, the, the the put call ratio now heading lower, which is bullish for the market, but so it's very much neutral. It's, it's midway between these two extremes, um, and I think what that's really telling us is that we're certainly not near the the ultimate high for this move. We would want to see the put call ratio down below 0.55 uh, to uh, to be confident that uh, we were ready to put the high in for for this overall move. Um, so so steady as she goes on on this measure, and uh, certainly short term bullish for the market. And the VIX, this is uh, this tracks volatility in the market. Uh, high volatility tends to mark bottoms in the market and low volatility tends to mark tops. So again, an inverse uh, indicator of this. Sometimes called the fear index because moves from so-called panic to so-called complacency. And uh, we did, uh, as you can see recently, we just in that June sell-off, we did get uh, numbers up here in the high 20s. Uh, certainly now just uh, heading back down to the, into that sort of complacency region. We've had a couple of fairly low readings, um, but that's not unusual when the market is uh, trending higher. And uh, and we can see here, back in 2011, the, the, um, the VIX can stay down at these low levels for quite a number of weeks or months. So we could just be seeing the start of that, uh, that kind of behavior here. Um, again, certainly nothing to be overly worried about uh, right now, whether we're at the ultimate top. Uh, and, and the VIX has still got room to move lower. I think in the two, 2007 high, it got down as low as 10 or so. So so we've still got certainly uh, room to move. And uh, and uh, But but again, this, these low readings could uh, mark the uh, that we're at perhaps close to a, some sort of short-term correction in the market. And then just for fun, because it's a U.S. presidential election year, I thought we'd have a look at the uh, election year cycle. So this is the this is a composite of the Dow Jones Industrial Industrial Action Price Action for all the uh, U.S. presidential election years going back to 1900. And uh, surprisingly, the market has been uh, staying fairly true to it. We did have the the high there back in April, and then the June low, and then the the push to new highs into September. So um, so if we if we're following this cycle we, we could say that uh, perhaps we're coming up to a little bit of volatility in the market through September October before uh, a push to fresh highs towards November December so uh, we'll have to see cycles can sometimes be a little bit hit or miss so we'll just have to wait and see how this one pans out but um, certainly very interesting to, to keep your eye on these things so just summarizing the U.S. stock market, we're certainly in that well-behaved uptrend at the moment. Uh, the the old 2007 high is now looking under threat, and uh, and I think the market's just uh, steady as she goes higher. Uh, however, we're the 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 uptrend since 2009 has been a very overlapping price action. I think we'll continue to see that. We'll see probably short-term corrections as we get uh, closer to those 07 highs, uh, but certainly no indications of the ultimate top being uh, in the market. In, uh, uh, as yet. And switching over to the Australian stock market, I know many of you uh, have an interest in that, so we'll uh, take a detailed look at what's happening there. And on the uh, ASX 200, uh, this is the XJO, of course, just very much in this long-term consolidation pattern. I mean, it, it feels like we've been here forever, doesn't it? And you could you could argue, again, the, the market has gone nowhere since the early 2000s. It's not been a great place to, uh, to park your money long-term. And certainly no sign of uh, of a break to the upside or the downside at this stage on, on the monthly chart. Focusing into the weekly, uh, this chart's a little bit busy, so let me just take you through it. Uh, these dashed uh, red lines here are the uh, long-term trend lines that you see here on the monthly chart. So these uh, these lines here, I've just uh, translated them to the uh, dashed uh, lines here on the weekly chart. So you can see back here, 2011, we did get that quick uh, flush out to the downside, just tagged the uh, the uptrend line there, and then we went into this sort of seven month uh, consolidation in this tight wedge formation. Uh, that broke to the downside earlier this year, and then we just um, 
uh, and then, but then the buyers just seem to come in and uh, and push the market higher, and uh, and that's had the effect of uh, making this higher low here, which is uh, obviously a short-term bullish sign. However, we do have uh, plenty of overhead resistance up here at 44.50. Uh, the undersigned of this uh, this wedge trend line would uh, will probably offer also offer offer some resistance, and then we've got the longer-term trend line uh, up there around about sort of 4,700, 4,800 just at the moment. So, <clears throat> so the market still got a lot of work to do I don't think we're probably there uh, ready for a break to the upside if if, if and when it reaches there um, I mean we still have a lot of um uh, issues in the market, such as uh, being tied to uh, the, co the commodities markets, which are largely consolidating at the moment, um, and also the high Australia do dollar still um, still stifling um, overseas investment in the local stock market. So I think those two factors mean that when we get to the uh, upper trend line here, we'll probably just see a, a retracement to the downside, um, and uh, and then we'll probably remain certainly within this sort of 4,000 to 4,700 level. Um, I'd say for, at least for the sort of next six to twelve months, anyway. Um, so definitely short term bullish on the uh, on ASX 200, but uh, longer term, I think, just in for more uh, for more chop sideways. And on the Ichimoku chart, you can really see all this white space above and below how tightly packed the price action is. Uh, we did have that confirmed bear break to the downside back in 2011. The lagging line and the price both breaking through. Just nudging up towards that resistance there at 4370 on this chart, and uh, just squeaking through. And, and my own feeling is that we will break through there, um, and and head up probably to the sort of 40, uh, 46, 4700 level. Um, it, uh, but uh, I think longer term, that uh, we're not certainly we're certainly not off to the races and through 5000 and away. I think uh, we will just get uh, again further uh, chopped to the to the side. And on the point and figure chart, you can see that consolidation by these t this tightly packed price action, uh, very overlapping up and down. <clears throat> and uh, we do have some targets here, down here in the mid 3000s and up here in the 5000s, but uh, in, in for point in point, if you follow point and figure theory, uh, none of those targets are actually active at the moment. We do need to push higher or a push lower to reactivate these targets. So, <clears throat> at the moment, the on a positive uh, side, you could say we're now breaking through this downtrend. If we do get up round about that. Um, 44, 45,000 area uh, that will start to look more bullish on this chart. But again, you have to take that in the overall context of this being a, a large sideways consolidation, and uh, and we will meet uh, lots of overhead resistance as uh, as this market heads higher. So just summarising the Aussie, I think we've probably seen uh, all the downside to come, at least in the short term. Um, but remember, there is lots of uh, overhead resistance up ahead, and the market probably will struggle as it gets uh, gets uh, uh, higher towards into the four thousands, uh, for uh, the mid four thousands rather. And uh, I think longer term, or certainly the next six to twelve months, we're in for much more uh, consolidation uh, to the to sideways between that sort of four thousand four thousand seven hundred level. So having a look at the currencies now, and we've been tracking the Aussie dollar in this um, uh, Andrews Pitchfork formation. Aussie dollar is certainly in a very well behaved uptrend at the moment. Uh, just been consolidating lately, but it's just above this uh, 100 cent mark. Um, but uh, certainly no sign of any technical damage being done as yet. We do have some support from the centre line of this uh, pitchfork around about 96. If the market came down and just tagged that, uh, that certainly wouldn't be uh, that would that wouldn't be a surprise, and it certainly wouldn't do any damage to the market. Um, we could move even move higher from there. If the market was to break through, then we've got some more support down here in the sort of uh, high 70s to low 80s uh, area, currently about 77. Um, but uh, I think uh, overall, very uh, much uh, Aussie, Aussie dollar in a long term uptrend.
And on the Ichimoku chart, we can see that back in 2009, we did have that break to the upside, lagging line and price pull through. And since then, we found support in the cloud two or three times. We did have just have that price break in lower back uh, earlier this year, but the lagging line never came through. And then the market quickly recovered and uh, is now back above the cloud, looking bullish again. We do have support in the cloud here at that 101 level. We would expect that to hold. Um, and you could, But you can see just the cloud just starting to turn to the right there and that's just indicating that that uh, that consolidation phase that we're in that we're in at the moment so uh, we may see a bit more consolidation but uh, it certainly uh, doesn't look like it's about to break down this market on the euro well everybody's been getting very excited about the euro heading higher isn't it great the euro is heading up again um, but uh, it certainly doesn't look like we're off to the races to the upside uh, on the on this chart uh, here we've got key support down here at this uh, 119 to 123 level it's now been uh, tested one two three four five times and then we have the all-time high back here in 2008 and then we've got two lower lows since then um, and I think it's just looking a bit more like a topping pattern than a, than than a consolidation that's ready to break out again uh, we'll have to remain it remains to be seen what happens in the short term but uh, I think we'll probably just put off the inevitable for a while I think this market is ultimately going to break down but but this being a monthly chart don't forget we could still be in this consolidation phase for many months, even even a year or two, and, uh, without it breaking uh, one way or the other. So um, certainly long-term bearish, but uh, short-term bullish, uh, and uh, you can let the buyers have their fun for a little while longer. On the US dollar, it's also in its own consolidation phase. This is a monthly chart, and we can see here it's been building this uh, triangular path pattern. We did have that uh, false break to the downside back in 2011, but the market quickly recovered, made this little uptrend move. We just have had a little bit of a breakdown there. Uh, I guess as the euro is pushing higher and more uh, quantitative easings being announced, but um, certainly no technical damage done long term. Uh, still within this overall consolidation pattern, and uh, we may just see it. Uh, uh, probably push a little bit sideways and uh, uh, I would I would expect it to eventually move higher and tag this upper trend line here what happens when it gets there is uh, is open to question though whether we see a breakout or or perhaps another iteration or two of uh, of consolidation within the triangle so so certainly you know perhaps short term bullish maybe even a little bit of consolidation but within this overall uh, triangular consolidation pattern for the dollar the British pound. I just wanted to highlight. Uh, this is looking in a very interesting um, situation at the moment. It's, it's traced out this uh, ascending triangle, and some of the foreign exchange markets are very technical, and they, they do respond well to uh, things like trend lines and technical measures. Um, so here we can see it's tagged almost to the cent uh, this uptrend line, and and it's uh, it seems to be heading back up towards this uh, line of resistance, around about 167 here. If it does break through. Uh, we've got a measured target up here, 199. It could run up there fairly quickly if it does break out. So, uh, so certainly looking interesting. I'd uh, keep uh, keep my eye on the pound as it comes up towards the the 167 level. Um, and the point and figure chart, uh, it's uh, just broken through this downtrend line, so it's back in bullish territory for the first time, um, certainly since uh, the old uh, financial crisis highs. And uh, we do intriguingly have a target up here at 198, so that would uh, be in line with that 199 that we see on the uh, weekly chart. So Sterling, I th think, definitely want to keep your eye on. Switching over to commodities now, and uh, the CRB index, we've been tracking that in this uh, bull flag um, formation. Uh, we had that big rise after the uh, financial crisis lows, and then it's just been consolidating, came back, just tagged the 50% retraced line, it was also support from this old high back in 2009, and uh, and it's really just moved higher from there. It's now, it now looks like it's broken through out of this bull flag formation and uh, is looking very bullish. So commodities across the board looking bullish, but as we'll see in a moment, uh, individually it's a, it's a bit more of a, of a patchy um, picture. 
Here we've got uh, crude oil on a weekly chart, um, and as you can see, it's just been really in this sort of long-term consolidation phase. You could argue it's just in this sort of rising uh, channel, so maybe a little bit more bullish than bearish, but uh, it certainly doesn't look like it's anything to get excited about just yet. We've got support down here at 70, but uh, I think it's very much going to be a bit more sideways action for uh, oil in the, uh, to come. And then just for fun, I thought we'd have a look at iron ore. It's not that you can trade it, unless of course you've got your own personal steelworks. Um, but uh, we've certainly been hearing a lot of it in the news about uh, you know the mining boom supposedly being uh, over because uh, the iron ore price is collapsing. So, but I thought we'd just pull the chart up and have a look just to see what uh, if that's really true or not. Uh, after it back here in 2009 the market really took off to the upside and it, it actually tripled just with, within the space of a year so that was never going to be sustainable and since then we have seen just a little bit of consolidation coming back it does look as it's maybe just been sold off a little bit too hard it's heading back for this um uh, old uh, high from 2009 round about 100 100 of course also is going to be a very psychological level so you might expect some uh, buying coming in uh, at that level. Um, the other thing I guess to remember about the iron ore market is relatively speaking it's quite a young market. Uh, previously you would get these the steel producers and the miners would uh, agree a price and that would remain the price for a year so you get these long flat spots in the historic price action and then uh, back in 2009 the, I think it was China decided that they would like prefer a floating price and that's when the, the market really took off to the upside and we got this much more volatile price action. So uh, so it's not unusual to get a bit of volatility in a, in a reasonably young market. Uh, uh, I mean you could just ask the uh, Facebook shareholders if that was the case or not. So I think nothing to, can say, nothing to get too worried about uh, oil, uh, iron ore just yet. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens if and when it gets down to 100. But uh, yeah, I think news of the mining boom's demise has probably been uh, greatly exaggerated at this point. And then gold, this is something else everyone's been getting excited about. Uh, uh, we've seen this uh, this very bullish price action in the last few weeks and everybody's been getting very excited thinking uh, we're off to the races again. Personally, I'm not really so sure. Uh, here we've got the uh, this, well, this fairly well behaved uptrend that we had up from the, uh, the 2008 lows and um, then we did just get that sort of blow off top and then the market's just been consolidating sideways. Uh, I think the market right now just testing the underside of uh, that long term uh, trend line. Uh, it does look like it's just nudged a bit higher uh, in the last week or so. Uh, but I think ultimately we're, we're probably in for maybe a little bit of a sell off uh, and I'm maybe setting up uh, something of a bull flag between these two lines. Uh, the other thing to remember is we have been here before, back here at the start of 2012. We got this very gappy bullish price action and everyone thought that we were off to the races uh, and heading for new highs back then. Uh, uh, of course it petered out and I think we'll probably see the same here uh, as the market uh, just continues to consolidate. Uh, I mean longer term the market is very extended so this would be healthy for the market. I think maybe just uh, 6 or 12 months consolidation before uh, the next move higher. So, uh, But uh, we shall watch and see what uh, happens there. So if uh, the metals and the energies aren't uh, for providing the uh, CRB with its kick up, where where is it getting it from? And I think the answer is uh, is from the agriculturals. If you look at uh, corn, cotton, soybeans, they're all uh, taken off vertically, and uh, and this one's wheat on a, a monthly basis. And we can see here it's just uh, had this huge rise in volatility. It's broken out of this triangle, and uh, it's certainly heading higher. Um, uh, there's fu fundamental reasons. They've had droughts uh, across uh, the USA and Russia that's uh, greatly affected the wheat crop. Um, and uh, uh, but uh, you know it's, it's certainly looking very bullish on a technical basis. Uh, we've got this measured target up here at 15.15, which exceeds its uh, old 2007 highs. Um, so it's still a long way off yet. But uh, but certainly if if um, if uh, 
that could be very good news uh, for, for wheat if it headed towards that direction. Certainly good news if you're a buyer of agricultural commodities. Not so good news if you're a, if you're a human being that eats food because uh, obviously this is going to have a huge effect on uh, on food prices if, uh, if, if the market starts to rise in a big way. And uh, if, if you remember back here in 2007 when the market took off, we, we ended up with uh, food riots and so on across the world. So this uh, this could be the big news story of the of the next year or two, and uh, certainly one to, to keep your eye on. But uh, agricultural is across the board all looking very bullish at the moment. So just uh, bringing that all together in a summary, uh, the stock market is certainly looking bullish for the time being. Uh, to the U.S. stock market, the in the S and P 500, uh, heading for those old 2007 highs, and I think probably will exceed them a little bit. The Aussie stock market maybe not looking as bullish, certainly short term it should head higher but uh, longer term we're probably in for more sideways consolidation. Uh, on the currencies again most of them also consolidating certainly the US dollar and the euro uh, but sterling is starting to look interesting and uh, would be one to keep your eye on uh, just if it starts breaking out to the upside there. And then the commodities, uh, as a group, they seem to be turning bullish, but if we look individually, metals, energy is looking more like they're consolidating, but uh, the agricultural is uh, certainly breaking out to the upside, so, uh, so it's definitely looking uh, bullish for them. And then just before I leave you, I just to throw in a quick book recommendation, uh, this is one I've been reading. Uh, it's uh, by Daniel Kahneman. He's uh, won the Nobel Prize for his work in behavioral economics. He's actually a psychologist, and this is really uh, a, a summary of all the work he's uh, done. And uh, it's not certainly a trading book per se, although there are a lot of trading examples in it. And it's just really about the way we think and the way that we can change our thinking. And uh, and certainly, if you want to be successful in trading, you need to think like the the three percent of the population population that think this way and, and not the 97 percent. It's a very good book, very easy to read and you'll find yourself uh, nodding to yourself saying yes I do that all the way through it. So um, uh, definitely one to get hold of if, uh, if you want to improve your thinking. And then finally, if you want to uh, get a hold of some more detailed analysis on a semi-regular basis, uh, you sign up to my website, helixtrader.com, free subscription, and uh, if you want to get in touch with me, my email address is there at the bottom. So thank you very much for uh, watching, and uh, we hope that summary has given you some insights into the markets for the next few months.